Are you one of the three million Americans who stutter? Well, if you are, you're sure not alone. Many people throughout the U.S. and around the world stutter. And just like you, they worry about their speech and wonder if they can be helped. Fortunately, we now know stuttering can be successfully treated. And an important part of treatment is understanding the facts about stuttering and the feelings that often accompany it. Hi, I'm David Wilkins. I'm a senior in high school and have been stuttering since I was three years old. I was in stuttering therapy from age 6 to age 12. Together, we'll be meeting some other people who stutter. First, we'll hear some common questions about stuttering. These will be answered by experts in the field. Next, we'll discuss some of the feelings about stuttering. And finally, we'll learn some important things to do to help ourselves speak more easily and how and where we can get professional help. We thought that you should know that all kinds of people stutter. Well-known authors like John Updike, professional athletes like basketball players Bob Love and Bill Walton, famous statesmen like Winston Churchill, singers like Carly Simon and Mark Anthony, and actors James Earl Jones, Bruce Willis, and Nick Brandon. They didn't let stuttering stop them from leading successful lives, and doesn't have to stop you either. One question everyone asks is, what causes stuttering? Let's hear how Dr. Hugo Gregory answers this. Everybody is born with different abilities. You may be really good at sports, or you might be a math whiz. But if you stutter, you may not be so good at speaking. Some researchers believe that people who stutter are not as good as others at coordinating their speech mechanisms. These tiny glitches in coordination can make it difficult for you to speak smoothly and quickly especially when under stress. When you feel that words are hard to get out, you fight harder to express yourself. These feelings and reactions, along with normal everyday pressures, place even more stress on your speech mechanism. So even though stuttering may be a problem for you, it is not a problem you caused. And we know for a fact based on experience working with many teenagers, that you can turn it around. Is stuttering a psychological problem? No, there is no evidence that this is the case. We know that your stuttering can be embarrassing and frustrating. You may feel bad at times, and sometimes your confidence will make you feel like you're at rock bottom. But just because you have these worries doesn't mean that you're crazy or weird. You're just reacting in ways that are normal under the circumstances. Sometimes you might feel that there is something wrong with you. Let's hear how Dr. Barry Guitar responds to this. As we said earlier, you may have trouble with the fine coordinations needed for speech, but this is just a small problem, and with practice, you can learn to overcome it. So there is really nothing significantly wrong with you, and there's nothing to limit how much you can do with your speech. Do I stutter because I'm less intelligent than others? No, of course not. The majority of people who stutter are well within the range of normal, and people who stutter have just as much right as anyone else to be a genius. Look at Isaac Newton and Charles Darwin, both of whom stuttered and both of whom achieved great things. People who stutter can be as successful in school and work as people who don't. The key is, don't let your stuttering hold you back. People often say, just relax and you won't stutter. Will this help? Stuttering often involves too much physical tension in the speech mechanism. So people are likely to tell you, just relax. However, almost anything a person who stutters does seems to help, at least for a while. Your listeners oversimplify your problem by suggesting that making one change is all that's needed. Reducing your stuttering involves both speech and attitude changes. There is no simple fix, such as just relaxing. How come some days I can say anything that I, w I want to, but then other days I can't say any anything at all? Your stuttering goes up and down for many reasons. If you're tired or sick, your stuttering may be worse. 
If you're feeling well rested and good about yourself, your stuttering may be better. Typically, it changes as you talk to different people in different situations. Like a good baseball pitcher who sometimes can't get the ball over the plate, you too may have trouble for no apparent reason. Good days and bad days are very common among all of us who stutter. Why do, why do more guys stutter than girls? Boys have more of almost every problem than do girls. Is this fair? No, of course not. But it's a fact of life. It's also a fact of life that three to four boys stutter for every one girl who does. Why? First, boys develop speech and language at a slightly slower pace than girls. Second, people seem to deal with boys somewhat differently than girls. These differences, however, will not need to influence the way you can respond to therapy now. As you will see in this video, there are many things you can do to improve your speech. When I stutter, why do I feel the way I do? Not being able to say what you want to say, when you want to say it, would make anyone feel frustrated and embarrassed. So if you sometimes get mad at yourself or feel ashamed about stuttering, that's normal. It is also normal to feel angry when your listener finishes a sentence for you or when someone teases you. These are feelings that all of us who stutter have. As you work to improve your speech, your feelings about your stuttering and about yourself will begin to change. Next, we'd like to talk to you about some of the common feelings that people who stutter have. A lot of listeners have told me things like to slow down or to take a breath and, or to just say it, just to, to spit the word out, which really makes me feel bad because it's really not that easy and they really don't know what, what a person goes through when, they, when he stutters. One of the worst things, I think, is when, when, when you're talking to somebody and they might be a, a really nice person or something, but they'll, they'll start, start almost laughing every time you stutter. Like, they'll, they'll think it's, it's so funny and, and, and you can tell that they're trying not to laugh, but it's so obvious that they're, they're smiling and everything. And that's just, it, it's so frustrating be, 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 because you sort of feel angry at them because there, there's no reason that, that they should be picking on you at all or, or that, that they should think it's funny because it's, it's the hardest thing in the world for you at that time. But like, but, but sometimes it gets kind of annoying when you wanna like say something and you can't. It's not unusual to feel somewhat different from your friends. In fact, comparing ourselves to our friends is probably one of the biggest concerns we have, whether we stutter or not. Let's listen to Peter talk about this. In seventh grade, I had a speech pathologist named Mark Morris, and um, I felt really close to him, and I, I told him about how ev everybody picked on me and teased me about my stuttering, and he, he told me this, this story about how when he was in, in grade school, uh, he didn't have the same backpack that everybody else had, and he felt really horrible, and like he felt like everyone didn't like him because he didn't have it, and that, that sort of made me realize that no matter what, everyone is, is, is somehow different from, from everyone else. And, and I sort of, uh, stuttering was, was my, my way that I was different. And, and that sort of helped me think about it. I, um, I don't always say as much as I'd like to. Um, maybe when I'm with my friends, um, it's hard for me to, to meet new people, talk, talk to people I don't know. Well, like, like just knowing, like that you are that you are gonna stutter, and then like, hey, and then like I get worried, like what other people might think if I I I I, I do stutter, and like if hey if I'll be able to get out of like my blocks and stuff like that. Now let's hear what Amanda and David say about how stuttering affected them in class. I've often felt that my stutter limits me, 
like I may not raise my hand in class as much as I could and things like that. Yeah, I, I, I feel kind of bad because like I, I know the right answer but like I, I'm not I'm not able to, to say what I want to say and then like I, 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 I might get mad because like I'm being stopped by like the fact that I stutter. The worst thing about stuttering is sitting in a classroom and uh, you want to make a point. You know your point is valid and you know your point would raise a lot of question and um, it would, you would really prove your point and it's that uh, restraint that you have of raising your hand. Um, it's, uh, it's the restraint a stutterer has when uh, they want to ask out a girl and they can't or they feel like um, um, she wouldn't get a good first impression or I wouldn't give a good first impression. Well, Mang, do you think that it's important to talk to teachers about stuttering? I, I think it is because then they, like, if you're having, like, a hard time in class, like, they know what you're going through. And, like, I, I've told some uh, of my teachers and it, like, I, I found out that they like also used to stutter, and so it kind of helps in class if you know that the t the teacher knows, like understands what you went through. Besides feeling different, some of us feel rejected because we stutter. We personally feel put down because of the way we talk. Zach and Peter clearly describe this. I've had people laugh and 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 actually turn away and, and talk to other people. And, and when that happens, you feel empty inside, not, not, a, not really respected that well. One time in si sixth grade, I was giving a report about vampires, and I was so, so into vampires, I, I knew everything about them, and I, 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 I was giving the report, and, and I started to stutter really badly, and I had these, these, these head jerks at that time. When I'd stutter, sometimes my head would like, it'd go like that, and, and all the kids just, I felt like the whole room just burst into laughter. Mm. And uh, it, it was just the most horrible feeling in the world. Sometimes we also feel that people don't understand why we stutter. Let's listen as Peter talks about this. Before my parents really knew what, what stuttering was and what it was about and everything, um, they, they would try to help me in every way that they could. They were parents and they, they loved me, but they didn't really know what to do at all. And so they, would, they, they just, just didn't understand what it was like to be a stutterer. And, my dad always saw the frustration I went through trying to get out words and everything, and he always wished that he could could take my stuttering and that that he'd be a stutterer. But but there was there was, there was never anything else that he really felt he could do. By talking about your stuttering to your family and friends, you can help them understand it. You put them more at ease by being open. Another common feeling is our reactions to teasing. At the very least, teasing is a nuisance. At the worst, it hurts us and makes us angry. Peter describes this. When I was in probably fifth, sixth, and seventh grades, I, I was picked on so much about my stuttering. I, I couldn't really talk to, to anyone. Most of my friends weren't, weren't my friends anymore, I felt like, because they, they picked on me about my stuttering so much. And um, there was a time when I, I wouldn't even go to lunch because I didn't want to sit, sit at a table by myself. So I'd, I'd go sit in the library and I'd, I'd take out a book and I'd, I'd, I'd sit in between the aisles and, and read it until the bell rang. Perhaps one of the scariest feelings we experience is the feeling of being panicked or rushed to talk. And when we hurry to speak, it's tough to speak fluently. Amanda and Peter talk about this. I generally do feel rushed when I speak, usually because speaking has always been so stressful for me that if I have to speak, I want to get it over with as quickly as possible. And um, feeling rushed is really not is really not good because I tend to get more tense, and then my throat gets very tense, and then there's usually a higher chance that I'll have that I'll stutter. The, 
there have been so many times when I, when the, the the phone will be ringing and I'll I'll, I'll answer it and and I'll try to say he hello and I won't be able to and so I'll be I'll be sitting there and, and there'll be silence on the phone and the person on the, on the other end will go hello 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 and and so I get get panicked and I I I can't 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 really say anything at that point. Yes, it is common to panic when we feel rushed to speak. However, it's important for us to take all the time we need to plan and say our thoughts. As we practice this, perhaps with the help of a speech therapist, the feelings of panic will lessen. The worst thing about stuttering is probably the uh, frustra frustration I felt when I was younger in middle school and high school with trying to meet people or maybe always worrying about if I'm going to have to speak in, speak in front of large people, maybe if it's a speech or maybe it's a, if it's asking a question in class. That was always really scary for me and I, there were times where I didn't want to talk, go to school because I knew I had to give a speech in some class. I knew I was really going to, I'd be really scared to, to do it. I think that's the worst thing about it. Just a lot of the frustration that comes along with it. It's um, that it's um, s slow and it's um, frustrating and um, sometimes it isn't fast enough if um, you want to go um, faster in s talking. All of us get frustrated when we are ready to do something and can't. Feelings of frustration decrease, however, as we enter into more and more speaking situations. Strange as it seems, we do learn positive things about ourselves and other people because we stutter. I think most people might say that there aren't really that many positive things that go along with stuttering, but I think if there's one thing, it has turned me into a more understanding person and to understand other people's feelings and to understand when people are scared and when people are frustrated. I think I can see that I can see that in friends and family very well. In in my own opinion, I think my main benefit of stuttering is uh it gave me a uh, path, I guess, for school. I'm uh, majoring in speech pathology and I want to go on to graduate school. There is one good thing about being a person who stutters because it does help to make you a stronger person because once you've learned to cope with all the stress involved with speaking and started to master, started to, to really control your life instead of not having the stutter and control your life then it really does make you a stronger person. Even though we can do a lot to help ourselves on our own, most of us find that we can do a whole lot more with therapy. We can't show you everything about therapy here, but we can sh show you some of the more important aspects. One aspect of stuttering, using too much physical tension when speaking, is often dealt with in speech therapy. Let's watch. So when you talk about school, there's a couple things you want to do now. Stuttering is okay. Mm -hmm. I just want you to stutter easily by not pushing and by moving through the word. And okay. by moving through the word, through opening your mouth just a little bit more. Okay. Also, and this is a lot to do at one time, but also try to feel your tongue touch in various places. Feel your lips touch. When you get good at that, then you can sense right away when you're starting to push much more than you can now. And that's a big part of therapy and an important part of therapy. So why don't you go ahead and try that as you're talking about school. And again, I'll continue to interrupt okay. you and stop That's you to try to help you do some of this. I've noticed that, uh, well, the classes are larger, obviously, but uh, as far as learning, I think it's a lot harder to learn at a school like this because uh, of maybe of not having as, as, as much one-on-one -on -one help, obviously, because there's just too many kids. But it, Okay, on that B now, what happened there? I pressed a little too Yeah, you hard. pushed pretty hard with your lips, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, and that's going to happen, and that's okay, but why don't you show me what we'd rather have you do? But. Okay, or but. 
but. Okay, but. But. Okay, that's a hard one because I'm starting the voice first. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's a little bit harder to do. Try it again. Just don't bring your lips together as hard. But. Okay. All right. But as far as the environment. Okay, what did you do there? And I, uh, my tongue was sort of pressing up towards the back of my mouth. Okay. Feel any tension down here? Yeah. Because see, that's where that vowel is made, is down here. Yeah. Some of it's made up here too, but a lot of it's right here. Okay. Um, let's, let's try it again the easy way. Stretch it out. Environment. There you go. A environment. A environment. F feel down here with your hand. Go environment. environment. Feel the vibration? Uh, environment, yeah. You need that vibration, good. And there seems to be more opportunities as far as education goes and internships. Okay, try that one. It's okay that you did that, but I just want you to go back now and try it my way. Try it the easy way. Internships. Perfect. Okay, now what was different about that? That time it seems like I started the voice first and... Okay, started the, the voice down here, didn't you? In my old way, I'd try and like form the sound first before worrying about voice. That's right. But this time you turned the voice on right away, didn't you? Mm. Okay, good, good. That's a way to do it. That's a good job. Remember to try to keep opening your mouth just a little bit more. Mm. It's oh. hard to remember to do yeah. all these things, but try it, because <laughs> I know this is new for you. I'm taking a fluid mechanics class, a differential equation. Okay, go back on that one. Differential oh, okay, equation good. class. Good, you kind of erased the hard one by doing it easy that way. Mm. Good, try it again. A differential equations class. Differential. Differential Good. equation. Notice how the tongue didn't push on that one? Yeah. Yeah, so you didn't jam the tongue up for that D sound, did you? Yeah, you put you put the tongue up where it belongs for the D, but you didn't jam it up there, and that's good. Mm -hmm. That way the sound can come out. Okay. And tell me more about what you where you'd like to work in chemical engineering, what kind of job environment you might like to have. Actually, chemical engineering is hopefully just going to be a fallback for me. I, I'm trying to, to become a medical student, and if things don't work out, I'll pursue, pursue the chemical engineering part. Did you catch on that K sound? It's really a C, yeah. but it's a K sound. Yeah. Okay, chemical, what did you do with that one? I pressed my tongue hard against the top of my mouth. Using okay. too much pressure. Well, for the K, you're making that back more. Why don't you try it? Go like this. Yeah. Go. Okay. Isn't that back here more? Yeah, it's towards the back. Okay, you were pushing kind of hard on that one, weren't you? Now try it without pushing like this. Chemical. Chemical. Good. Now do it hard so you feel the difference. Feel that pushing? Chemical. Okay, now do it easy. Chemical. Okay, now do it hard again. Chemical. Hard again. Chemical. Good. Now do it easy. Chemical. See the difference between those two? Mm -hmm. Okay, what we're shooting for is the easy one. The easy one. And you're doing great. Notice how Peter, with the help of Dr. Ramig, discovers the pushing and tension associated with his stuttering and learns to change it and speak in an easier way. Now let's watch Dr. Guitar go over this important point with Peter. What I'd like to do now is work with you a little bit on the moments that you're getting stuck and see if I can get you to tune in to, to what you're doing and maybe make some changes in that. So let's begin by um, Talk to me a little about your hobbies and what you know you do in your spare time. And the point here is that I'm going to interrupt you if you don't mind when you have a block. I'll just you know put my hand on your arm and see if you can hold on to that block. You, there's the natural impulse to finish the word, yeah. but don't do that. Just stay. R r r r r r r r and even if you need to take a breath, take a breath. Okay. And see if you could do that. Okay. Um, should I just uh, talk about my hobbies or something? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I. Uh, well, good, good, well, good, 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 great. Well, okay, okay. That's just well, what I want you to do. Well, Perfect. Okay, now well, feel where it's well, tightening up. Well, Probably in, well, not if it's in your tongue in part. Well, like writing. Good, good, good. Okay, now stay right in that one. And, and if you need to take a breath, go ahead. It looks like you're tightening in your lips. And is it a little tight down in here? In your yeah, it's. Good, 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 good. Poetry. Okay. And shh, shh. Good. Okay, now stay in that again. And don't let that go until I ask you to let it go, okay? Okay, again, it looks like maybe your tongue is tight. Does it, just nod your head if it feels tight there. Okay, and does it also feel tight down in here? 
Okay, okay, now, now stay with that. Now don't try to finish it yet. Think of the word, but what I'd like you to do is while you're holding it, gradually let it go. Let, let the tension go. So you're letting the tension go out of your jaw and out of your tongue, but keep staying in there. Keep trying to say the word and letting the air flow out. And let your shoulders just relax. Let your whole body relax, but stay right in that stutter. Okay, now anytime you're ready, go ahead and let that word out, but just stay relaxed as you do. Short stories. Great, okay. That's exactly what I want you to do. Another aspect of speech therapy is learning not to avoid embarrassing or feared situations and words. Dr. Ramick helps David come face to face with things he has been avoiding. Doing something purposefully, typically in an easier stuttering fashion mm -hmm. than what you would otherwise do. And the reason why you're doing it is because you're confronting what you would otherwise be very much afraid of and right. that you would run from and that you would avoid all the things that keep stuttering hot. You know, mm -hmm. this is in contrast to that. You're confronting uh, something that's not fun to do. You're confronting something that you're embarrassed about, that you're fearful of. And by doing that, you start to feel less uncomfortable with it. In other right. words, you feel more comfortable with it. So what I'd like you to do is, while you're talking to me, um, maybe once per sentence, and maybe at the beginning of the sentence, mm -hmm. this is just a suggestion, if you would put in a voluntary stutter for me, something like that. Okay. Just go ahead and uh, mimic what would otherwise be stuttering, but do it in an easy way. It doesn't have to be hard stuttering. Just purposefully put in some prolongations or some repetitions okay. uh, in your speech. Try to remember to do that just for the next uh, okay. few minutes here. This winter, um, I've been skiing Good. Winter Park. Okay, you put in a couple uh, there. Good. And uh, I haven't been able to get up skiing all that much just because of money and everything. Um, Hopefully, uh, over spring break, I'm going to uh, Good, that was another good bit. one. Another good one. Okay. How has therapy helped you? Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I, I've been going for a, a while now, and <clears throat> I, I, I think it's helped because, like, it, it's made me more... confident in my speech mm -hmm. and also like I, I, I've learned ways like to like to get out of blocks and how to like handle my speech if I'm having like a, a hard day or anything like that. Speech therapy has helped me gain more confidence in myself to speak in class for presentations or to sing the answer. We also need to resist time pressure, both before and after we start to talk. Let's hear again what Amanda has to say. Feeling rushed is really not, is really not good because I tend to get more tense and then my throat gets very tense and then there's usually a higher chance that I'll have, that I'll stutter. We can resist time pressure by taking our time when we talk, both before we begin to speak and while we are speaking. Another way to reduce fear of stuttering is to let people know that you are working on your speech. When they ask about your stuttering, answer their questions and show them that you accept both yourself and your speech. To conclude, we thought you'd like to hear some of the things Amanda, Ryan, and Peter feel have helped them improve. Well, it probably sounds really corny, <laughs> but I'd probably just say not to, get, get, not to give up hope. You have to accept your speech. That's the most important thing of all. You mm -hmm. have to accept it. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you have to um, be willing to take full responsibility for it since it is your problem. That goes along with practicing, um, incorporating it into your daily life, mm -hmm. not being ashamed when you stutter, which is very difficult, believe me. Yeah. Peter, what advice do you have for teens who stutter? The most important thing I think would be to not let stuttering stop you from accomplishing anything. If it's something as small as maybe raising your hand in class or if it's something as large as maybe going to school at, at, at some college, um, just not, just don't, don't let it stop you because there's no reason for it to stop you. 
Here are several Stuttering Foundation publications that talk about stuttering in detail and teach you how you can begin to help yourself. To find the names of some specialists in stuttering in your area or state, contact the Stuttering Foundation of America at 1-800-992-9392.